How do you keep track of your team's ability to handle a real incident, not just theoretically, but under pressure with real data? That's exactly the challenge our threat range was built to address. The Hack the Box threat range is a new team-based blue team simulation environment designed to train SOC and digital forensics roles in highly realistic cyber defense scenarios where they must respond to targeted cyber threats. Not only that, you can benchmark your team's posture through an objective assessment that evaluates your team's performance across core metrics such as mean time to detect, mean time to investigate, and gain a thorough understanding of proactive measures you can take to improve your team's skills and overall security posture. Each scenario is essentially a storyline of an attack with varying complexity and duration to suit different training needs. All the data, alerts, logs, network traffic, forensic artifacts are captured and loaded into the simulation. Now from there, your team steps in to do what blue teams do best, detect threats and noisy alert cues, escalate valid cases for deeper analysis, investigate forensic evidence across hosts, and reconstruct the attack and produce a full incident report. The experience is collaborative, pressure tested, and map to realistic roles and workflows. Now, before we actually get started with this scenario, it's essential to check the guide for your assigned role. Each role comes with a tailored guide that explains your responsibilities, key interfaces, and scoring criteria. Having seen my guide and before checking out the dashboard, I will also connect to Hack the Box. This is extremely important because it will give us access to our scene. As a SOC analyst, I will start with the alerts dashboard. And here we can see all incoming alerts that are visible within a queue. Each one is unassigned, so the first step is to actually claim an alert. Once I have claimed it, we can see that we also have uh, access to the SLAs. And here to the right, we also have our helper and activity log. Here I can see what type of activity has gone by with uh, our specific alerts and at which stage of the process we are before resolution. To triage an alert, I'll connect to the Elastic CM interface and now start diving into the logs, looking for signs of lateral movement, suspicious command execution, or privilege escalation. And seeing that this is a genuine threat, I will escalate this to the DFIR. This will be done by selecting that it's a true positive alert and of course, rate its impact. I will also add notes. And now the forensic analyst will pick up the escalated alert and investigate further. As you process through your actions, you can also see this impacts two core feedback systems. One is the Threat Resilience Index, which you can see on the dashboard. This updates dynamically, reflecting how well the team is detecting and responding. Individually, you earn and lose points based on how you handle alerts. Speed, accuracy, correct escalation, and avoiding false positives all play a huge role. Now, the Threat Resilience Index is the core scoring engine behind every single threat range simulation. It quantifies how effectively a team can detect, triage, escalate, and investigate a cyber threat across the full exercise. Rather than measuring performance with simple task completion, the Threat Resilience Index reflects an organization's real-world resilience under pressure and how well your team can contain damage, recover from mistakes, and respond collaboratively to complex threats. So let's go back and handle a different kind of alert. This time, we will pick up an alert that turns out to be a false positive. Instead of escalating, we will close the ticket with justification, and this helps reduce noise and avoid wasting DFIR time. Or if you initially escalated something but find more info that disproves it, your forensic member having investigated and being able to disprove what you escalated can now de-escalate the ticket, helping refine team efficiency. The final part of the threat range goes beyond detection and escalation. This is where teams can turn their analysis into a complete investigative narrative. At this point, the team will work collaboratively to piece together the entire kill chain. Using evidence gathered throughout the simulation, they must reconstruct the adversary behavior, timeline, and objectives, and teams can also iterate on their report through the five-day window, uploading early drafts and improving them as new findings emerge. This actually mirrors real-world workflows where incident reports actually evolve over time. Along with submitting the report, the analytics page is also available once the event ends, offering a tangible artifact for performance reviews, assessments, and debrief discussion. Now heading to the analytics dashboard, you can see that our team hasn't performed very well for the sake of this demo, but you can have access to your final threat resilience index score, 
You can gain insight on top performers of your team and how your teams performed based on their roles, gain access to alerts handled and tickets handled, and of course, calculate mean time to acknowledge, as well as mean time to detect for sock rolls. You can also gain more accuracy on the true positive and false positive submitted, as well as mean time to acknowledge and mean time to investigate for digital forensics roles. This gives admins, team leads, and players a full view of how the exercise went and where improvements are actually needed. So to wrap up, Hack the Box Threat Range gives you a scalable, gamified, and performance-based way to train, benchmark, and continuously improve as a well-coordinated unit. If you're ready to bring realism, data-driven insights, and accountability to your training program, reach out to our team of Hack the Box experts to get started. Thanks for watching.